Today, I would love to share with you how I have been growing French tarragon in my gardens over the past six years. All of this footage was taken from my personal gardens. And so I would love to share with you some of the different things I've learned. And so we'll take a look first at the different types that you can grow, how to get it growing through propagation, how to care for it once it's growing, and some of the problems that I experienced. Plus, the most fun part is how we can use it in the kitchen and preserve it so we can use it through the winter. So first there are some different types of tarragon that you can grow and the one that you want to grow for cooking is called French tarragon. French tarragon has just a wonderful flavor and you cannot grow it from seed. And then we ha also have Russian tarragon, which you can grow from seed, but you really don't want to grow that for cooking. So I do believe it, that it produces flowers, but don't grow that one for cooking. And then there is Mexican tarragon, which is not really related to the Russian or the French tarragon, but sometimes it's substituted for the French tarragon because it grows better in very warm climates. Now, French tarragon grows well in raised beds, as you can see here, I had it in my square foot garden. And then also it grows great in containers. However, it does need space in a container. So you will need to make sure to divide it if you grow it in a container. But we'll look at that when we get to the care part of the video. So this is where I had it growing in a container. And I usually have about three containers growing at one time. I live in USDA hardiness zone 6b and it grows very well for me here. I have read that it also grows well in zones 3 through 9 and you can take a closer look at this chart to see or cross-reference it to Celsius if you do not live in the U.S. Um, this will give you the minimum temperature that an area can experience and that'll just give you a quick reference to make sure that you're in an area where it will grow. Now I have some established plants so early in the spring I will usually divide them and that will give me more plants. So you really can do this before you have a lot of green growth like this. I could have done this in early March when I just barely had some green popping out on the roots at the top of the soil. but. I, that kind of got away from me. I didn't have time as most of us don't. And so um, I did this in late March and I divided my big plant down into three smaller plants and repotted them. And I did this in the evening on my deck. So that's why it looks dark there. <laughs> Sometimes I like to work in the evening. So anyway, here are the three new plants. You can see I had the two smaller ones there and the black pots and they are looking great at this time. And then another great way to get that tarragon growing is to just take some early cuttings in the spring. Actually, you can take cuttings at any time during the tarragon's growth period. But I like to take them in early spring, so I have some nice new growth. And so this was in April. So it's nice to have a piece that's at least six inches long. And so what you'll want to do if you take a cutting, just strip off the lower leaves, about one third of the stem. And now we need to use a substance to help the tarragon produce roots from the cutting. And so you can use a rooting hormone. Now this is not made for edibles. So whenever you use a rooting hormone like this, you need to wait one year afterwards before you consume the plant. That is just what I have been told by various manufacturers. They all agreed. It was the same answer um, if you use it for um, vegetables or herbs. So you'll just wet your little stem there and then we want to dip it into the rooting hormone and then shake off any excess. Now over the years I have been trying to find a natural rooting hormone that might help the plants produce roots. So make sure you have subscribed to my channel and when I do find a nice natural way to help cuttings produce roots for these harder things like tarragon, I will make sure to do a video on that and share it with you guys. So back in 2014 we took some cuttings from a willow tree and I infused the water with the willow stems and I tried to use that to help um, produce roots. So I did get some roots growing from my tarragon 
stems. However, once I transplanted them and tried to grow it, they died. Um, once they were transplanted, they didn't really care for that too much. So that plant did not really survive. But now this year, as I showed you, I used the rooting hormone and I did this back in early spring. And once you have taken your cuttings and you've done all of this, I kept mine in a shaded area for about a month and I kept them misted with a spray bottle a few times a week. And now in September, they have really turned into some nice plants. Again, I haven't been clipping these or using these for any kind of cooking or anything like that and I won't until next spring. So this is what my tarragon looks like and you'll notice I have a lot of new growth coming out of the center of the plant but I have a lot of old woody growth coming off of the sides and we really don't want that. You can just cut that off and what we're doing here is we're going to relieve this plant because it's getting stressed out from all of the excessive growth and now we have one nice little small plant here and just on a side note and we'll look at this again but you do not want to do any kind of heavy cutting heavy harvesting on a tarragon plant if you are within four weeks of your first expected frost date or it may die to what's called winter kill because it doesn't have any energy there and the cold will kill it so just make sure you're doing this within a critical time period there and so I'm planting this in my square foot garden tarragon if you're planting it in the ground or in a raised bed try to give it about two feet of space because it will grow into a big beautiful plant I typically grow it in containers but for those of you who do not have a container garden I wanted to show you how to plant it in your square foot garden and you'll just plant it um, just to make sure that you cover up the roots and make sure your soil is very well draining uh, that's very important tarragon does not like to sit in water so be careful there and I have already amended the soil here with some rich compost and so I don't really need to give it anything else tarragon really once you get it growing it's a very easy to care for plant and once you just understand and a couple of you know important things about growing it then you'll see that it's very easy to grow so um, now here is an example of tarragon that I had growing in my container and this is how it looked in June and it's nice and full but by the middle of the summer really in August it started to look really bad and I just knew I needed to cut it back now let's make a note here my first expected frost date is in the middle of October so I am six weeks out from my first expected frost date. This is very important because you don't really want to mess with your plant too much if you're within that four week period. So I am cutting it all back because it's drying out and I want to encourage some new growth because the new growth is just wonderful. But after a long, hot, dry summer, this is what my tarragon usually looks like. So after I've cut it back, I'll water it very well and then I'm going to feed it a water soluble vegetable fertilizer that's half diluted. You do not want to have excessive fast growth on tarragon because it will lose flavor in the leaves and I know this from experience. So just whenever you are feeding your tarragon, really you only have to feed it maybe once uh, during the growing season. A little bit of compost for my herbs that are in containers or even my vegetables. I use a water soluble vegetable fertilizer diluted at half strength. So this is how it looks a few weeks later. It's really springing back and it has a lot of nice new growth which is where all the flavor is because once it's gotten real woody like you saw me cut off there's no flavor there and it's really hard to work with and then just a few more weeks later it is in October and it's looking great. Th at this time I'm past my first expected frost date and I do not do any heavy harvesting of the tarragon plant. I'll go out and maybe get a little sprig to put on some eggs or something like that. You don't want to cut off any more than probably a fifth of the plant at this point because we want it to have a lot of energy when it dies back so we can enjoy it the next growing season. And that brings me to a mistake that I made growing tarragon from the very beginning. And I used to bring in my plant every winter because I thought I was going to protect it and oh, I just love French tarragon. <laughs> I didn't have time to research how to grow it. I just thought, well, I'll 
bring it inside and I'm sure that you know it will be fine and I'll take it back out in the spring and I'll enjoy it then but it would die when I brought it indoors and it did not come back in the spring and then I finally figured out that I needed to experiment a little bit and so I left a pot outside and I brought a pot inside that way I hoped that I would at least have one pot the next spring <laughs> and so you see it here this one was one I left out in the winter all winter long and then here's some I had in my square foot garden that I left out all winter long and this is it on February 7th you notice it's pretty much dead with some old woody stems sticking up so in mid-March I noticed some green coming back and that's always such a joy when you go out to look at your plant and you see it's coming back to life in the spring. So I just love to see that, especially with these perennials because they really require very little work. And then just a few more weeks later, um, it was growing into a nice plant. And so this is what also happens in my containers. And it's pretty easy to remove the old woody stems on there. Um, and by May, it's looking great. And then it really looks great all through June for me and into July. And then it starts to dry out um, you, for sure by August. And that's when you see me doing a lot of pruning on my plants. Um, or sometimes it gets away from me and I don't do it until, you know, the very beginning of September. So as I mentioned, I live in zone 6B and we have very cold winters and that's what you need to grow tarragon. Tarragon needs to go through a period of at least six weeks at around 40 degrees Fahrenheit or lower so that it will come back the next year. So that's why my plant would always die when I would bring it inside, but the ones that were left outside got to go through that chill period and then they would come back. So I learned through experience. And so for those of you who want tarragon in the winter when your plant is dying back, or maybe you live somewhere where you don't have a six week period of a 40 degrees Fahrenheit, then what you'll want to do is um, take a plant that's in a container and just cut it back on top a little bit and then you can wrap it in a plastic bag and then put that where it will experience those temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or lower maybe an extra refrigerator or something like that and then you will have some new growth when you remove it from that chill area okay so now the fun part is going out to the garden and picking it fresh that is the best way to enjoy tarragon and i have used it so many different ways a lot of times um for instance in this recipe and i have all of these on my channel as well this is a fennel salad with some cabbage and i made a creamy dressing with uh, the tarragon and it was just wonderful on the fennel salad And one of the more popular ways to use tarragon is in a sauce. It just really imparts such a wonderful flavor. You'll find that tarragon is great with things like fish or poultry. Um, it is wonderful in salad dressings, a creamy salad dressing or a vinaigrette. This is one that I did here was a vinaigrette. Put it right there on some fresh greens and even right on top of my fish. And a wonderful way to preserve the tarragon is to just infuse some white wine vinegar and then you'll have that for salad dressings later as well. So you can just put you a sprig or two into a little vinegar bottle and I use my little skewer here to push it down in there real good. And we'll just pour over some white wine vinegar and put this in an area that's cool like in our pantry for a few weeks and then you can put it in your refrigerator and then you'll know you have it for salad dressings and whatnot later on. A lot of people say they don't like the flavor of dried tarragon and I do agree that it does not have near the flavor as fresh tarragon but I've used dried tarragon many times and I always just really enjoy having it. Um, so you can certainly dry tarragon. I dry it right on the stem. Cut your tarragon for drying when it looks really pretty and that's usually for me in June. And I like to use a dehydrator. Um, it's 
The Excalibur dehydrator has a special setting for herbs and they always just turn out really, really nice. And so what I like to do is just dry them on the stem and I'll crumble them when I go to use them. I just put them right in the mason jar hole and then this food saver has a little attachment where I can suck the air out of the jar and it's nice and tight because you know your enemy, whenever you store food, um, is oxygen and then light of course in temperature but most of all you want to make sure you get the oxygen out of there okay and then mark it now if you do not have a dehydrator you can always hang it um, upside down to dry in a cool area that's away from direct sunlight and that works out great this is an example using oregano so I'll just store my herbs and use those all winter long you can also freeze uh, your tarragon and ice cube trays and just put a little water in there puree them and then freeze them and put them right into a little ziploc bag and you can throw that in soups really nice to have that to use all winter long as well so there you go i hope that this video helped you grow french tarragon if you have any questions please leave them down below the video and i will be more than happy to help you thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day